Okay, and I have one final question. Um, this one is also from Ella. She sees that different kinds of girths can also give different kinds of problems. So can you describe the importance of the girth and sort of talk about the different varieties that are out there, especially the gimmicky ones? Okay. Um, the girth topic, to be fair, the girth topic is massive, absolutely massive. But in order to avoid pictures like this, or that, or unnecessary increase in heart rate, this little device here is um, a device we bought in France, and we can test girth. Nothing changes, we just change the girth. And we know how come in this girth the heart rate goes up, and in this girth, nothing happened. Like the heart rate stayed the same. But with this particular girth, the horse was really stressed. Elevated heartbeat. Why is that? Okay. So totally not really judging this one girth over the other by opinions. We use data. Then we use gait analysis. How come on this horse, the horse has much more stride. Uh, sorry, on this girth, the horse has much more stride. And on this girth, it doesn't. How much on this girth, the saddle pressures all of a sudden much more in the front, and on this girth, it doesn't. I like everybody to, I'm gonna generalize now because I can't talk now for an hour <laughs> to, to, to explain all the different girth, but I'm gonna to talk to you now and I'm gonna ask a question. This shin strap on the helmet, okay? Should that be super tight or loose in any sport? It should be touching, but rather loose before tight. Because all of you, I learned that from Gerrit Heuschmann, when you stand up, you close your eyes, and you will notice how you sway a little bit. Okay? Because now your eyes are closed, and you're trying to balance, because your eyes also gives you a focal point to balance. The second you tighten your teeth, your TMJ is tight, you really start to sway. Okay, so now imagine you're an athlete with a, oopsie, <laughs> sorry. Imagine you're an athlete with a helmet and you tighten your strap so tight that you can't use your jaw and your TMJ is tight. You're like constantly having a problem with your own balance. A good helmet fits from front to back, left to right, and the side fits snug on the side. Compare that to a saddle. Behind the shoulder, in front of the lumbar, so the length. Tree width, the width of your head. Tree angle, the angle of the side of the head. If these three things fit, the helmet fits properly. That strap is just there if you do a jerky move like this. All that, right? So if you make all of a sudden a very jerky move, then that strap holds that somewhere in place. But all these new girths, not the old ones, with the fuzzy and the little knobble on the top, with an elastic band would always fall apart anyway. But the good girth, they just have a little chin guard here, or a little strap, and you can move your jaw, you keep your balance, and the helmet doesn't go anywhere. A good girth, a good girth should be girthed up like the chin strap on the helmet. Many girths out there have too long elastic. There was not a single girth in the market before the 70s. Out of the race industry, we came up with an incredible bad habit that we girthed up right away to the last hole and off we go and run. Because I can, with elastic, go right away to the last hole. And then we thought, oh, it's much better for the horse. It's great because with, with elastic, the horse can take more breathing in. And then we use this tool I have here on the slide. A girth with too long elastic will always increase elevated heart rate. It's incredible how many girths are wrong designed and people don't know it. But it was expensive. Or my trainer told me, did the trainer also told you that they get an additional thousand dollars on the side to train these products? No. So sometimes marketing sells wrong stuff. Sometimes it sells right stuff, but most of the time 
It has nothing to do with fitting. So position yourself in this situation. You're a runner, a 5,000 meter runner. Would you run with an elastic strap around your chest when it's relatively tight? Yeah, I could. But when we take your heartbeat, I guarantee you, your heart rate will elevate too. Because anytime you exhale, that elastic band gets tight. Anytime you inhale, that elastic band has to stretch. So guess what you do? You don't even realize. Subconsciously, you're going to go. <laughs> you start to breathe shallower because you don't want to use the energy to stretch that elastic. This is how the, the, the snake kills the, the, the animals. It goes around the animal, and every time the, horse, the, the animal exhales, the snake goes tired. Animal inhales a little bit, the snake goes even tighter until the animal can't inhale anymore. So most girls have wrong elastic, and that's, of course, we teach it in our Saddle Fit for Life Academy for Life about uh, the, the type of girth, material of girth, um, shape of girth, etc., etc. PP. So to summarize this up, rather no elastic before too long elastic. If I have to give you measurements, I would say the exposed elastic should be never more than an inch and should be always three ply, always three. And on the jumping, no more than two inches exposed elastic on both sides, left and right. Most elastic only have one side. Most elastic have too long elastic. And you run into a lot more problem with saddle fitting because of your girth. You might have a beautiful saddle, it fits good, but you have the wrong girth. Many blisters on the spine and withers come from the wrong girth. Length, super, super easy. Okay, you want to um, girth the saddle up in an area where the horse doesn't give you a jerky reaction. Let me find the picture quick. So the, let's go a little slower here. There you go. The edge you see here on the bottom, that's the edge of the pectoralis muscle. All of you people who listen to me have had that done when they were small. People tickled you underneath the armpit. Guess what that is? That's the edge of your chest muscle, your pectoralis muscle. And you did not like when somebody pokes you in it. The elbow is most of the time four inches below that. And that's what most people know. Oh yeah, my buckle should be above the elbow. Four inches, 10 centimeter above your elbow. Otherwise, you have to ride for 20 minutes before that buckle edge hits that pectoralis muscle and the horse goes and trots out of the elbow rather than out of the shoulder, okay? So the length is more crucial than any other fancy name or endorsement letter from a Grand Prix rider, okay? So you want to have that girth between these two muscle groups, between the pectoralis, and this is the latissimus, okay? There's lots of saddles out there who have the wrong girth length because this is a latissimus, same thing. If somebody walks and hits you here in the side on the edge of your latissimus from behind, you probably remember when people did that to you in school, you jumped. So why would you want to have the girth buckle where the horse is the widest, your stirrup leather pushes against the stirrup, uh, against the buckle from the girth, your leg pushes against the buckle of the girth, and the horse, again, can't extend his humerus because the latissimus, what comes from the midsection of the horse's back, you can see it here nicely, and attaches to the humerus. So you want a horse who jumps nice, you want a horse, this is the shoulder blade, the humerus, to extend that leg, you're gonna go hollow because he's guarding himself, who would have thought, from a girth buckle. So the right length girth buckle is way more important, way more important than the material. So we have horses who are super sensitive against leather. Others are super sensitive against um, synthetic. As I said, right from the beginning, this could be an hour talk. So what can I give you as a summary, as the most important? Very short elastic, triple ply. Whatever you can expand with your hands is an issue on the horse and on your saddle fit. 
Number two, it should be in the right spot. The length is very important. And stay away from the overpriced fancy name girth. They're most of the time more gimmick than they can help. 